Hi, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, we're going to be learning about Go, specifically about the context package. So the context package is something that you most likely are already using. If you have been using the Derby SQL package, well, it's most likely that you have seen these two methods, the DB query context and the exec context that belong to the DB type. Well, those receive a context package, not a context package, a context type in the first argument. Not only that, the net HTTP as well there has a method called not new request with a with context that happens to be also using the context package. So it's most likely you're familiar with this package, although maybe you don't know exactly what is happening behind the scenes. And not only that, if you happen to use an open telemetry, well, you're also using the context package. So what is in the context package? Well, the context package defines a type called context that defines deadlines, cancellation signals, as well as well as request the scope values. So let's look at these three things and more precisely, and I will give you examples of one of them in real life. Let's start with the deadlines. So the deadlines, there are two ways to do this. The first one will be using this function called with deadline that receives a parent and a time and returns a context and a cancel func function. If you think about it, it will be sort of like, hey, it's beginning at this point in time and I want it to end at this point in time specifically. On the other side, we have this function called with timeout that similarly receives a context as a parent as well as a time and returns similar values, which will be the context as well as, as well as the cancel func. The difference will be that instead of saying, hey, n at x time, you say n after x amount of time. And the way I want to show you, I want to explain this with you uh, to you is, uh, is by showing you an example. So let's jump into the code and I will show you what is happening behind the scenes. So right here we have a function called deadline or rather a file called main deadline that what it does is um, what it's supposed to be doing this is defining a timeout that says hey there's a short duration so this is supposed to be ending after one millisecond and the way I'm trying to demonstrate this is that there is this uh, select that if you're not familiar with this the way this works is that uh, in go select is a keyword for grouping different go routines and whatever happens whatever go routines are grouped in that block will be executed when those are triggered so in this case there is a time that will be triggered after one second and this one will be triggered after the timeout is happened so if i run this if i run main deadline it will be timing out and the reason being is that it says hey finish after one second and this one says, hey, finish after, or rather, um, finish after one millisecond. And this one is, hey, finish after one second. If I change this to something like second, two seconds, what is going to happen is that, hey, you are supposed to be timing out, timing out after two seconds. So I'm going to be sleeping for one second. And if nothing happens after two seconds, I will be failing. If I run this again, you will notice that it says overslept because this means that the, uh, this was triggered and this one never happened. All right. So let's go back to the and discuss the other functions available in the context package. Besides deadlines, we also have cancellation signals. And the way this works is that you have this function called with cancel that receives a parent, returns a context, as well as a cancellation func. And instead of waiting for a time, you literally have to call it to trigger, to trigger all the cancellations that happen to be associated with the, with the context that was derived from the initial context. Let me show you how this works in practice. So this one is a little bit more complicated because there are a few different things that if you're not familiar with, but still I will, I will explain you all of them. So we have a, a main function, we have a channel, we, fa we have a function right here that does some work. 
we have the important bit that I'm trying to explain, which will be calling with cancel, and as well as running the function that we define above it. Now, the important thing is that I have a few different comments right here that say, hey, when this happens, this will be triggered, and in the end, this will be triggered. So let's, let's run it first to see what happens, and I will give you sort of like a step-by-step -step to what happens behind the scenes. So there's a wedding to cancel, there's a goodbye, exiting, and bye. Okay, so let's, let's again go into the code and see what happens. I'm defining a channel okay i'm defining a function then i'm defining a with cancel uh, context that happens to be running a go routine that is leaps for two seconds and then it calls cancel then i'm also running a go routine ha that happens to be running this function right here that is just listening and printing out values every 300 milliseconds so what is going to happen what is happening if you notice if you go back to the to the output is that every 300 milliseconds i'm printing i'm printing out a an int okay however if i receive a signal that says hey this is this context is cancelled i'm going to stop printing out values also i'm going to be closing the channel that i define above which is right here and this channel is just for demonstration purposes and to show you how to do some sort of graceful, graceful shutdown but truly really the important bit is that because i'm canceling right here what is triggering is this 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 execution right here that in the end stops this go routine that indicates that everything after or associated to my context should stop so that's the difference between the deadline and the timeout that we saw before is that this one is sort of a, a trigger manually and the other one is triggered by a time or by some sort of a elapsed time all right so, so those sort of the two differences between the two two ways to cancel things now let's jump into the last way or the last method that is defined in the context package so the last thing included in the context package will be the request the scope values. And these are as a little bit complicated, not because they are difficult to use more, but more that when uh, the, the idea when we should be using them. Okay, so please follow me along. Okay, so we have this function called with value that happens to receive an apparent, a key and a value. I return as a context. And you have to use that context to pass it down to whatever request you're supposed to be doing. So the way it works is that you define some key value values with whatever you want to use or whatever you're supposed to be using. And then from there, you pass them down to a different uh, requests. So how does this work in practice? Let's look at the code and I will show you the example that I have. So we have this example that is called main uh, value. And this is a bit hard to explain with these, I don't know, six lines of code. But I want you to think about, hey, when I'm trying to pass down um, context, a context value between different layers, if, for example, I have a request that is coming from a, a customer that happens to be including a uh, an authentication header and i need to use that authentication header as a, an argument for a different request perhaps it makes sense to include that as part of the in in the context as well so that's what i'm trying to explain right here so i have a call called with value that receives the context whatever that is it defines this a cons called auth to allow you to explicitly indicate indicate what the value is in this case and then some whatever value that i'm trying to pass down to the subsequent call then i use the api that is defined in the context type called value to get the actual value that happens to be a string i do do some type casting and then i just print it out again this is one of those things that uh, it, it's a, a bit hard to uh, not to use it i mean it's pretty straightforward but rather to make a good use of it okay so 
don't overuse it this is one of the things that i'm trying to explain so let's go back to the things that we should be doing next and the best practices when using the context package okay so what are the best practices when using the context package well if you happen to need a context in your api you should be defining the context argument as your first argument in your api if you have seen my previous videos for the microservices uh, how to build microservices in go you will notice that most of the requests that happen to be using something that requires some deadliners or some cancellation all of them have an argument context or ctx context context as the first argument the other one will be if you are defining deadlines and cancellations you need to make sure to call that function otherwise you're going to be leaking memory and leaking go routines obviously like i was mentioning just now a few minutes ago when using with value you just need to make sure you are not overusing it it's one of those things that you you need to be you need to be careful with that because it's really specific the use case is really specific and 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 again i will leave, leave in you i will be leaving you a few a few links in the description so you, you can read about that that the things that sh you shouldn't be doing okay so with that being said, uh, why is this important? Why this package is important? Obviously, because it's not only uh, useful for defining a few different timeouts when you're working with external APIs, but also at the same time to trigger uh, in information between different services, like when we discuss open telemetry, but also at the same time, you can define your own different uh, logic when, when, when trying to say, hey, I want to spend this much time when working or depending on different APIs, or perhaps I need to pass down some, some logic uh, between different services and whatnot. So context is one of those things that we all need to understand perfectly before get digging, you know, digging down into more Go specific uh, features in the, in the language. So hopefully that makes sense. And obviously if you have any comments or questions, please, Please let me know. I will, I will do my best to answer them. Until then, please take care and be safe. Talk to you next time. Goodbye.